So far today, we've been changing our implementation of an interpreter for Mo so that the interpreter itself is written in an object-oriented style. But the language that we interpret, Mo itself, is still a functional language. That is, Mo only has numbers and functions and function calls. What we're going to do next is switch back to writing our interpreters in the usual way, using Splate's functional constructs, but now we're going to implement a language that is object-oriented. That is, we're going to change Mo and get rid of functions and just have objects instead. So our new grammar, uh, the main pieces will look like this. We'll have an object form for creating an object. And we'll use the kind of syntax that we uh, just developed in our, in our macro for our split. So an object will have a number of fields in parentheses and then a colon followed by any number of methods. Uh, and if you have zero methods, well, you can leave the, the colon out. So we have an extra little uh, case in our grammar to deal with that. Expression.symbol, that is a field lookup, while expression.symbol open parentheses, that is a method call. Remember, we don't have functions, so there's no chance that this will be interpreted as a function call expression, because there are no function calls. There are only field lookups and method calls. Inside the parentheses, fields are symbol equal expression, uh, where the expression provides the value for the field, while methods will use the literal word method, the name of a method, and then in parentheses we'll have the literal word arg and then the body of the method is an expression after the colon. The expression for a field will be evaluated when the object is created. So that initial value for the field is, is evaluated uh, before the object is even created, whereas the methods, it's after you already have an object, then you call a method and the body expression of the method is interpreted at that time. Um, that method always takes one argument, it's always called arg, so if you want to refer to that argument, you can write arg as an expression. Uh, meanwhile, you can also write this inside of a method body to refer to the closing object. So we just have two variables, in a sense, arg and this, that you can use in a method. You cannot use arg and this in the initial value expression, except, I mean, if you do, it, in, it refers to an enclosing object, not to the new object that's being created, uh, because this expression is evaluated before there is an object, and there are no methods to a field. So just uh, to look at some examples using these, uh, these main pieces, this is an expression that creates an object that has a field x and a field y. The value of the x field is 1, and the value of the y field will be 2. Uh, and this is the same. Even though we write 1 plus 1 here, that expression is evaluated first to get a 2, and then we make the object with x and y as 1 and 2. Here I've made an object, and then inside parentheses uh, I just wrapped it around to, to make things clear. Um, that object can be, uh, we can select the x field out of that. So that would give us a 1, because we create an object with x and y, and then look up the x field. Here's another object. This one I'm not uh, getting any fields or methods out of. In fact, this object does not have any fields. It has just one method called ink, uh, which takes an argument and it adds 1 to its argument. And here is that same object, but now wrapped up uh, to the left of a dot, which means that we are calling the ink method here with the argument 2, so 2 goes in for arg, arg plus 1 is 3, and that's how we get 3 out. Here is an object with two methods, increment and decrement, uh, that of course add one or subtract one from the argument. Here is an object that has both fields and methods. So we've got a field x and a field y, and uh, we have a mem dist, stands for Manhattan distance method of this object, uh, which takes an argument that it ignores, but all methods take some argument, so it has to take one. Uh, what it does instead is look up the x field of the enclosing object and the y field of the enclosing object. So in Java, you might just write x plus y, um, or you could write this.x in Java, but in this language, you have to write this.x. Uh, anytime you want to access a field, you have to use this or dot. Here's that same object, uh, but now where we actually call the mdis method, we pass in a dummy zero, but we get this.x plus this.y, uh, and so we get three up. 